Well, a new report by Human Rights Watch uh, claims that a December drone strike in Yemen might have violated rules that President Obama himself set to regulate their use. At least 12 people were killed in a strike that was carried out by the U.S. military's Joint Special Operations Command. The first reports about the strike claimed that it was a wedding procession full of civilians who were killed. No, 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 the military said. It was an al-Qaeda group. But then the military backtracked after human rights groups started digging into the story. And then it acknowledged that it was a wedding procession after all that was hit. However, the military says that it was uh, most of the people that actually died were in fact al-Qaeda militants that were in that procession. But here's what the new report says. It says Human Rights Watch found the convoy was indeed a wedding procession that was bringing the bride and family members to the groom's hometown. The procession also may have included members of AQAP, also known as Al Qaeda of the Arabian Peninsula, although it is not clear who they were or what was their fate. The report went on to say Human Rights Watch found no evidence, and the Obama administration has provided none that the individuals taking part in the wedding procession posed an imminent threat to life. In the absence of an armed conflict, killing them would be a violation of international human rights law. Joining me now to talk about some of this report and the overarching issues when it comes to U.S. drone policy is Ben Swan, the founder of BenSwan.com. Ben, thank you so much for joining me. Now, first of all, I want to get your impressions of this new report. Do you think that it will actually change anything? Well, I, I'm hopeful that it will, but I'm doubtful that it will at the same time. Look, the Obama drone strike policy is becoming almost infamous in that there's all this rhetoric that goes out there from the president himself, from the administration, from the military, from the CIA. We have so much rhetoric, um, and yet nothing ever changes in terms of the policy. The policy seems to be completely lawless, no matter what new rules they put into place, no matter what memos seem to be sent out. Nothing really changes. The, the policy itself is lawless under our rule of law, regardless of any small changes they might make to it. Now, President Obama promised more transparency from the drone program in his national defense speech that happened back in May. And yet the U.S. has a policy to not talk about drone strikes, to not even acknowledge that they happened. If he wants Americans to support this program as being effective and legal and as being necessary, why not talk about it? Because it's not legal. It's not necessary and it's not effective. I think when you really get down into the nitty gritty of what this drone strike policy consists of, you have stories exactly like the one you're talking about. Look, you have a wedding procession in Yemen. The administration says we know that members of AQAP are there. They launch this drone strike. They kill a wedding party. Family members, relatives, friends say there were no Al Qaeda members there. And, and you, you wiped out this entire group of people because your intelligence was bad, because you, you missed your mark. And we see this happening over and over again. So the reason you can never really truly sell this to the American people is because when you say that you're now going to have a policy that's transparent and you bring transparency to a drone strike policy, immediately anyone who takes a look at it will say, well, this is a terrible policy. Now, consider the fact that when a drone hits a, a, a target, it blows up about a square block. That's about the, the amount of space that is, is hit when the actual drone um, strikes. And as a result of that, you have so much collateral damage associated with drone strikes that you would never be able to sell this as effective and necessary and uh, even a, a reasonable uh, process. I'm glad that you made that analogy to kind of help people understand just how impactful drone strikes really are with that uh, block radius. So let's focus on what's going on in Yemen at the moment. Now, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism says as between 59 and 69 strikes have happened in Yemen, resulting in the deaths of dozens of civilians and even children. Is the U.S. shifting attention from Pakistan to Yemen at this point with these drone strikes, in your opinion? Well, they, they are, but they're also moving drone strikes to Mali. They're moving them to Somalia right now. If you take Somalia, Pakistan, and Yemen, those three countries, uh, there are something like about 120 children who have been killed in the last few years as a result of drone strikes. That's children alone. Um, we have thousands of people who are dying who are just referred to as collateral damage. And again, that's the problem here. When you go to the American public with these numbers and say uh, less than 2% of the time, less than 2% of the time, the intended target is actually killed, 98% of the time you miss, 
98% of the time you're blowing up and killing civilians and children and women? I mean, this is a policy that just it, it reeks of stumbling over itself. Look, and, and the other thing that's important here, the president, when he talked about creating this newer, kinder, gentler drone strike policy, and he has talked about this, where they've moved it away from the CIA and they've moved it to the military, where the Department of Justice, when it comes to U.S. citizens, will have to draw up a case. Every new step that they take in this process doesn't make the drone strike policy any more effective, nor does it make it any more legal, because the entire system is illegal in terms of how we conduct um, the, these strikes. There's no declaration of war in any of these countries, in Yemen, in Somalia, and Pakistan, and yet we are constantly barraging their people with drone strikes. It's, it's lawless. Ben Swan, founder of the BenSwan.com website. Thank you so much for joining me and for weighing in on this really sensitive issue. Thanks so much for having me.